Do you know what this is? Uh -huh. I know you think you do. Let me tell you exactly what it is, and more important, why it matters. It was way back in 872 BC. Idolatry was sweeping through the northern kingdom of Israel like a plague of locusts. To make matters worse, the king of Israel married a Phoenician woman named Jezebel, who brought her witchcraft and idolatry with her to Israel. Perhaps best known for wearing makeup, Jezebel was one of the most wicked women in the Bible, if not all of history. Throughout her long reign, she promoted the priests of Baal to high office, and their numbers grew. Not everyone was willing to follow this evil queen into idolatry. A prophet named Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal to a contest. He asked them to call on their god to light a sacrifice on fire. For hours, the priests wailed and chanted, even cutting themselves, all in the vain attempt to have Baal perform a miracle and send down fire from heaven to light the sacrifice. When nothing happened, eventually they had to admit <laughs> defeat. And now it was Elijah's turn. He had them douse the sacrifice with water three times, and then he called on God. And before their eyes, God brought down fire from heaven and consumed the sacrifice. After that, Elijah ordered all 400 priests of Baal to be slaughtered. 1 Kings 19, 1 and 2. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that one of them. Elijah may not have feared 400 prophets of Baal, but he was terrified of Jezebel. He fled into the wilderness, even asking God to let him die. God took pity on Elijah, allowing him to rest up and eat before bringing him on a 40-day journey to Mount Sinai. Here God would show Elijah his presence. Then he told Elijah to anoint Elisha as his successor and Jehu as the next king of Israel. Meanwhile, Jezebel hmm. continued to do evil deeds. When her husband, <laughs> King Ahab, was depressed because he wanted another man's garden, she arranged to have the innocent man falsely accused and murdered. She didn't know it, but her days were numbered. After her husband and son were both killed, Jezebel put on makeup and fixed her hair before greeting Jehu as he rode into Samaria. Jehu called up, Who is on my side? Two eunuchs looked out the palace window and then, at his command, threw Jezebel out. Her body was crushed by the fall and devoured by dogs. It's an amazing story of faith in God and the consequences of sin. But is that all it is? Just a story? That's what many people believed until very recently. Jezebel had no tomb to prove she existed because she was eaten by dogs, but she did leave behind something interesting. In the 1960s, a royal seal, twice as big as ordinary seals and much more intricately carved with Egyptian symbols like the Sphinx, Horus, and Ankh, was purchased off of the antiquities market and donated to the Museum of Israel. The first letter of Jezebel's name was missing, so archaeologists at first ignored the discovery. Years later, a Dutch archaeologist re-examined the artifact and concluded that the first letter was probably part of the upper portion which was damaged. This sparked a whole new wave of excitement about the discovery, which so beautifully confirmed the truth of the Bible. And that's why it matters. So what is it? The Jezebel Seal. But then, you already knew that. Hi, I'm David, and I really need your help to get the message out. Please subscribe to my channel, and watch the next one.